Joe, let, let's kickstart this. So uh, for anybody that hasn't met Dean Philpot, again, good friend of mine. Uh, he happens to be my, my EXP sponsor. And thank you. That was a life-changing move. Um, so thank you. I really appreciate you showing us the opportunity on that. And uh, just looking to give as much back to everybody in our community, all of our coaching students, anybody in an EXP organization, and really just any agent in general that's looking for some, some leveling up. Because you know what? When we work together as an industry, that's how we level up, not this whole adversarial BS culture that's developed in real estate. So that's something you and I have always talked about, you know, when I was at Remax and you were right next door, we always built kind of a, a friendship and, and it was always based on collaboration and pushing each other. So um, I'm super excited. I got my note, my notepad out, my pen ready to go, Dean. So without further ado, my friend, kick us off and let's fucking go. Right on. Wow. Did you just say the F word or was that, did I, I just did. hear that? I in my brain? Oh, nice. Yeah. That was awesome. That is fucked up. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm okay. I'll stop now. I just want to carry that on. Um, we're going to change your, um, um, Joe, if you're going to change that screen or you don't have to, I suppose. Um, so like I was just talking about the, um, the power of uh, family that has, you know, that has me under its beautiful control. And that's really the driving factor behind everything that we're doing here. And, um, and that's why it's so important for me to be able to look at this other side of the coin. So, uh, I'm going to assume, should I assume, I guess a guy should never assume anything, right? Um, how many people were on last week's call? Cause I want to, I just want to just say yes, if you're on last week's call, because I want to get a, an indicator of, um, you know, I'm going to do a little bit of a, um, a recap from last week because it was really important. And, uh, we talked about a lot of, we talked about a lot of juicy stuff and I see mostly yeses popping up. Uh, Jason, can you change that screen back to you? I can see either you or Joe. I don't want to be looking at myself two times here. You All right. Can thank you. Up, you know? Yeah, you bet. That's good. I mean, you're, you're a good looking guy. I don't mind that. And you shaved and everything. Look, you look like you're 12 years old again. But um, half of last week's call. That's excellent. I was there. Perfect. So most everybody was there. I'm going to give a little recap uh, because it's so important that we, uh, you know, we, we've uh, we've addressed the issue last week that we, we believe our mind, uh, not believe, we know it to be true that whatever we think about, you know, that's what we become. And it was important that we uh, understand that thinking creates and manifest everything that there is in our lives. And so if it's that important, why is we don't have a picture of our mind to work with? Because we think in pictures. So then we created that picture of that stick man. Uh, I call it the stick man. We called it then the mind. I printed off a copy just like this so we can you know, actually have that. For anybody who wasn't here last week, you can feel free to uh, get a hold of us for sure. And two heads is better than one. We know that that's a happy couple drinking champagne. That's two good minds, two good minds think alike. Um, so, so in that book, so uh, we asked last week, or I, I talked about as a man thinketh. We talked about that little book. And um, again, let me know if you read the book and any comments you can put in, uh, you know, about that book that maybe brought you to some enlightenment, I would love to know about. So there's a poem in that book that I absolutely love. And it says, mind is the master power that molds and makes, and man is mind. And evermore he takes the tool of thought and shaping what he wills brings forth a thousand joys and a thousand ills. He thinks in secret and it comes to pass. Environment is but his looking glass. Now, how does that resonate? Oh my God. So it just means that every week, everything we think about you guys, whether you want to let people know or not, but whatever's going on in your world, that's exactly what's been going on in your mind. And so um, I believe that uh, this is why it's so important that we dig into this thing and we can start creating, how do we use our mind to create and manifest everything that we want in our lives, right? So that's, uh, that was kind of a, a, a small snapshot of what we talked about last week. And we had those, um, we talked about some goal achieving things. We also talked about our level of awareness, which is again, one of Joe's favorite topics. And if we're gonna increase our level of awareness because we wanna to get to A to B, whether it's gonna be with our kids or, or with our family or you know, um, in your business, you have to increase your level of awareness. And we do that by how? Let's start typing that in, let's see who's listening. How do we increase our level of awareness? Just four things. And we're tapped into one of them right now. And so um, that's what I'm doing here. So um, um, I want to, during this little session here, I'm gonna be asking for a volunteer and I'll be asking a question. So then I think that you guys have the ability to unmute your right. conscious thought. Uh, you, you have the ability to unmute. So when, when I look for a volunteer, um, um, somebody just put your hand up if you want and, and you can unmute yourself and we can talk a little bit. This session is not gonna be so intense like it was last week because um, last week was setting the foundation. And what I do understand about if you're about to do any of these changes that we're talking about, better about to think a little different, you're going to have all the foundations put in place properly, like a home, like you look at a building. If you look at some of these condos that are built, when Kate just moved into a condo down on 91 Chapel, 
And it takes months to put in the foundation, months and months and months. And all of a sudden you're walking by as a pedestrian and you never see this thing. You think, oh my goodness, these guys must be paying so much for all this work being done, but there's nothing being done. And then all of a sudden overnight you go there and there's a building put up. What we're doing right now is we're building that foundation so you can have this beautiful, beautiful uh, building, which is going to be you, uh, you know, so you can perform, you know, for the rest of your life. But it takes a lot of work to put this foundation in. And we also talked about last week paradigms. Does anybody remember what a paradigm was? It's a, it's a group of habits that will control you, you know, whether that be good habits or bad habits, but a paradigm is something that can control you. So if you recognize that there's something going on in your life that's not serving you, well, one would want to know, well, hey, I better change this paradigm. But paradigms, it's, it, it, it's, it's the home. It, it's home is in the subconscious mind, remember, which is the second part of this, the underneath there. And that's where paradigms live. So for us to, number one, acknowledge a paradigm is great. But then we have to understand how do we go about changing a paradigm? How do we change out these habits? And so one of them is by repetition of a new idea. So that's why we keep going over those four things that's going to raise our level of awareness. level of awareness. So it's a person, a place, a book, and an affirmation. That's the four things. That's, that's Joel's happy place. Joel loves this one. We talk about it all the time. So I'm going to keep referring back to that because I think it's so important. Um, and so we've talked about the mind. Uh, we talked about how we can use our mind to manifest and create what we want. And then we talked about our sensory factors. You see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. Now we're hardwired into our conscious mind to operate, you know, by this right from birth. And so that's usually um, uh, how we make our decisions. And today I'm going to talk about a couple of decisions that I made in my life when I wasn't using the, was using the higher side of my personality, which is our intellectual faculties. So when we go around and we hear those rumors down at the coffee maker or we hear the rumor or you read in the newspaper and you allow that to you know, control how it is you think that day. Well, because it wasn't a positive thought, what happens is you end up letting that go down into your subconscious mind and it results in some bad behavior or on, you know, unfavorable behavior. You know, you go around all that day and you're not in a high vibration. And when we're not in a high vibration, guess what? You're in a low vibration. And so there's no good that's going to come out of that. And so this is the most important thing that I wanted to get across out of the whole thing was last week was, and this is where we'll sum up a recap. The most important thing is that we have the ability to um, 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 choose our feelings. We have the ability to control how it is that we feel. Now, when we feel good, when we have the control that we can feel good, well, this is when you're in that vibration that's going to, you know, uh, come out and create good results in your life. That's just the way it is. So that's the first step. Now, you guys, it's not that easy. There's just a lot of work to be done. You don't build a foundation over two weekends or two webinars. But this is where I want to keep talking about this because we can, if we can control how it is we feel, we will control the results we're getting in our life. And again, so all, all the little things that you're going to do, well, that's, again, that's the Jason thing. That's on the other side of the coin. This is when you look at your goals and you figure out, you know, how we're going to uh, achieve what you're going to want in your year. But uh, then you, you have all those steps to do in your business. But ultimately, everything that's going to happen in your life will start right here within thought. And so that's where it all starts, right? Um, so now uh, we talked about note taking last week. And I, man, oh, man, I, I'm a big, so I'm a big fan of taking notes. And so throughout the week I've, I've been doing a move a personal move and that's how i found that beautiful little happy happy father's day card from my daughter kate i was looking through my old journals right from 2009 and um and i started pulling out these old journals and oh my god like this is the one from a john maxwell right this is john maxwell stuff i wrote the whole uh, you know I, I, the whole book is filled with just gold nuggets and i would have never remembered that right now and in that gold nugget book i found another nugget that i want to share with you guys get your pen out um, if you're into some real personal growth, this is how it's going to take place. And we're going to put down ACT, A-C-T. It's just a small word, but every letter has the symbolization of some piece of growth for you. So when we're going through these things and you're taking notes and you want to reread them tonight or just know from your heart out that when you hear something of a nugget, there's going to be, you can do three things with it. This is something you can act on, uh, action. So, so is this something I can take action on right now? So that's what the A stands for. C stands for change. Is this something that I need to change in my life? 
And so, you know, if I'm dropping a nugget, if I'm, I'm, if I'm so blessed to, to, that, that I can drop a nugget that you feel is going to help you, mark something down. And then the T is for the teaching part. Is this something that I can go back and teach with? Because I find, what this is what I find, you guys. If you can take some of this information and go back this very night and be able to, again, help your family or help somebody else that's on your team, that's a teaching moment. This is what's going to solidify. It's going to, it's going to just put it right into your brain where you're not going to forget this thing. If it's that important for you and it's going to improve the quality of your life, why not teach it to somebody else? This is our goal. And that's one of our, that's one of our, um, our, our visions, right? Is to be able to go out and help. And that's again, what EXP is all about. And I'm not here to drive EXP. I don't, I think we have realtors for all, from all over the um, different brokerages. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, so, so, so I'll try and stay away from preaching about that, but I mean, I'm just so excited to be part of EXP. I can spit it out loud when I want. Um, so, so one of our things is that, so when you're taking notes right now, and I believe that this is something you want to do, and this is holding yourself accountable. And so when I went through my notes from what I was taking back in 2012 with John Maxwell, it's gold, it's gold, it's gold. And we talk about passion. What drives passion? How do you, what happens when you lose passion? How do you get it back? We have so much coming up in 2021. Joe and I was just talking about it earlier. We produced a thing called 20 Minutes to Platinum. And uh, Joe and I were talking earlier about how we want to present this next year uh, and go through every three weeks and maybe have a have a one hour uh, module thing. And, and I'm going to send this out to you guys. And so we know we have so much in store. And this is all about giving back. It's our job on the planet, of course, is to give back, to be in service to people, however you look at it. I don't care how you slice it. Your, your purpose on the planet is to do what you love to do and to give back to people. And that's when you'll find certainly the real happiness. And all this is not really, really having to dial in right now to our intellectual faculties, but yet it's a byproduct of everything that I've learned so far in my life since I've got introduced to this. So we talked about the mind. Uh, we talked about a book, As a Man Thinketh. Uh, can someone just, as a person plays book in an affirmation, got it. Yeah, so it's written down there. Um, I want to um, know, has anybody picked up that book this week? Because we have another book this week I'd like to introduce you guys as well. And, and these are all little small books, you guys. I know what it's like to be busy in your career. And I don't expect that people are going to pick up and just read full on novels throughout the week just because we had one coaching call. But the little books, and I do that because I'm the same. Look, look how thin this thing is. This is like a contact lens, for goodness sake. Uh, here's a book that changed my life by Price Pritchard. It's called U Squared. Take a picture, take a snapshot, do whatever you want to do with that. U Squared. This book, oh my goodness. Um, um, it's just, uh, it says the quantum leap strategy for breakthrough performance. And so it's not all about just your business. This stuff here applies to what we know as a, you know, on, on our internals as well. And I, and I found that this one was beautiful. So I want you guys to pick this one up this week or do your whatever. And I'll put it up there, Jason, so you can take a picture for sure. U squared. And again, these are little tiny books because my attention span, much like every other realtor on the planet, is at a very, very small span. <laughs> so, um, so we talked about... Um, using our beautiful mind and our conscious and our subconscious mind and just getting an understanding of what it looks like because if we're going to be able to change our lives we need to have a picture to work with and we think in pictures so uh the volunteer uh, whoever's going to help i want now to first it's going to talk about perception so we have six intellectual faculties right and the one that so this is used this is the higher side of our brain or our mind again i say brain you see that's just my habit um, but so the higher side of our mind um, is what is going to help us. Once we blend the thought that we're having in, in any given situation, we have the ability to blend it from the higher side of our mind, which is those intellectual faculties versus the see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. So when we're faced with decisions and you don't know what to do versus uh, just acting, just going right out and reacting, now we have this ability to stop. So now you have information in your tool belt and say, hey, oh my goodness, before I make this decision, should I ask myself a couple of new questions? Remember that question we asked last week? Is will this idea bring me closer to my goal and improve the quality of my life? Now that's the question. That's the sign of an enter that's the sign of an educated person. When you can stop, and that could be right from a listing to buying a home or an investment that walks in your door. And people want to, oh, and you know, again, people coming in all the time with new ideas and they want you to purchase something. As realtors, of course, there's always people coming at us, right? Oh, listen, oh my goodness. And they come and they talk you up and they, they, they boost up your ego and they walk in. Well, listen, I know you're a big shot in, uh, in, uh, in Georgia. So, uh, you know, and I just wanted to come to you first and I got this really great idea. But that's sometimes that's like round and shiny, as Jason always says in this thing. So be careful what we're running after, right? So the question to ask yourself, will this idea bring me closer to my goal and improve the quality of my life and my family's life? 
So that's the sign of an educated person when you can ask yourself that question. So again, so coming over now to the to the intellectual side of our of our of our mind, we're going to talk about perception. So now perception is truly just the way we view things. So this is our first intellectual faculty. And when we talk about perception, how we view things, this is where I'm going to want to volunteer. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to think about it when you feel like, um, okay, well, this is, so this is Jason writing that down. Thanks, Jason, for taking those notes. That is excellent. And putting that on there. When we talk about um, perception, the volunteer to whoever's going to, whoever's going to jump on the call, I'd like for you to give us an example about where in your life did you um, look at a situation from a different point of view and it wasn't really the right one. And when you backed off and left it alone, you felt, oh my goodness, if I had only looked at it another way. I'd like to hear of an example. I have one example. So as somebody else is thinking, because I like to get other people's uh, a take on this as well, right? Because we all have, we're all gifted with such great stories here. And really, uh, when we talk about when we're doing these in webinars, this is about connection. This is not about uh, you know anything else other than we're making a connection and we feel like we're connected, we can share our stories where we're gonna remember it more and we're gonna become more emotional with it. So um, for me, um, I was a list, I was an agent, I was a real estate agent in Whitehorse, Yukon. This is where most of my career was. And, um, and there was a guy called me and I, I was just never one of his fans to say the least, okay? So let's just, just I'll keep it polite right there and keep it PG. This guy was a, a, you know, around town and, and he was a guy that we all knew that used to use realtors. So he came in and he, he wanted me to come up and give him a price and he started going off on me and this is for you and I should sell this to you and because I think that is you. And because I was not seeing the, the opportunity there, I was so taken back by the way he used to treat people. And I've seen him around town. I didn't, I just didn't like the guy. The guy was less than, less than honorable about anything that he talked about around town. So I allowed that, uh, that, that opportunity because he asked me to list the property and I listed it. And before I even listed, he says, now, Dean, I feel that this would be a good fit for you. And in the back of my head, I'm just thinking, are you kidding me? I wouldn't come near you with a 10 foot pole, brother. I wouldn't buy your, are you kidding me? No, I'll, no, I, I'm going to list it and I'm going to act for you, but I'm not going to buy it. And so I went on and got the, got the listing and eventually I sold it. And I was going to say the ink wasn't dry on the contract when my ego stepped outside of myself and finally said, ha ha, I won. And then I realized this was such an opportunity and I missed it. I blew it. And for me, this was probably one of the biggest lessons in perception. And so for me, if I had stopped that day, because it's how we view things, you know, we have the ability in our conscious mind, you guys, in, our, in all of our consciousness to look at any situation negatively or positively, right? We have this ability. And so again, with, with this new, this newness that we have now in our conscious mind to be able to make decisions, I wasn't, I wasn't educated enough for that. And so, um, you know, we look at our business, like it's seasonal sometimes. We're coming into the winter months right now. When, and so here's my second example uh, where, where it was good for me. Um, I looked at, uh, I went into our Remax office when I first joined, this is back in just 1999 or 2000. And I walked into the office and it was kind of in the fall. And so all the, all the leaders and all the, you know, the seasoned realtors at the time walked up and says, hey, listen, kid, <laughs> imagine that now. Uh, don't worry, don't worry about this fall. He says, you know, like nobody ever sells anything in the fall, not here. Nah, you just go on your vacation, do your thing. He says, you know, February, March, April, it's going to be all of the whack, you know, maybe May month, then it'll start to pick up and you'll do really well if you keep up doing what you're doing, your habits. And you know what, you guys, I wasn't buying into that. I was like, mm, are you, no, that doesn't seem right. And so, but that was their perception or, and that was their, that was their reality, I suppose. So I took it on the other way. I said, well, listen, if you're telling me that, I'm actually going to look at this in a different manner. Now, I didn't realize I was consciously thinking opposite than them, but I turned it around and went and looked at this and went, you know what? If these people are thinking that everybody else is on vacation, because maybe they are, my goodness, that means half the realtors and Whitehorse is going to be gone. Huh, I'm going to be here. I stayed there and I closed 12 deals. Now, this wasn't the first year. Now, that was the second year. So I had come in because the first year I didn't do any of deals. It was the second year that I dialed this in in the, in the winter. I closed 12 deals in that December and I couldn't believe it. And he was right. Most of them were thinking of the same thought where, hey, we're going to take a vacation. It was their point of view. So I believe that people need to have more than one point of view. So this is where the collaboration comes in when it comes to perception and point of view. I dialed it right in and we got 12 deals the next December and every winter there on, I was the king of winters. Don't tell me I can't do some, right? So it's about your perception. So um, um, 
when we talk about perception, um, I, I'm going to give you a little example right now, right? So can you see that okay, Jason? Yeah, sure yes. Yep. They're okay. Okay, so just look at this sheet of paper, you guys, and I'm going to tell you that there's nothing written on this piece of paper. There's nothing there, right? And the more I tell you that there's nothing there, the more your conscious awareness is drawn to what is written on the paper, right? Now, am I right or am I wrong? There's nothing on this piece of paper. Well, there's something on it. Really? So you're going to be quick to assume there's something on the piece of paper. Yeah, well, you wrote something. You wrote something down. What is it? What I can't. What are you talking about? Well, I mean, it's, there's not much on the paper, but there's something there. Okay. Okay. Well, that doesn't. Uh, from my from my perception there was nothing on the paper you get it yeah yeah no, there's nothing on the paper now right this is as simple as that it doesn't make you right it doesn't make you wrong it doesn't make me right or wrong it just is so now my my newness about that one is i believe that everybody should be looking at things from a different angle and if you don't have that ability to look at things from a different angle we're going to help you uh, develop this mental muscle we have, so, so now your awareness is raised. So when we're looking at a situation and all of a sudden we don't think that we could pull this off, but yet you look next week, oh my God, somebody did it. I have other business opportunities that has happened like that for me as well. And again, I, I, I draw most of my experience guys from Whitehorse, Yukon. And so um, I was looking at a business once and I had a great business idea to bring the first ever uh, car wash, you know, outside, you know, you know, outside the, you know, but it's minus 40 and how is that ever going to work? And, and you know, I was working about bringing this outside car wash in Whitehorse, Yukon, and I was looking at it and then I finally convinced myself that I couldn't do it. Well, this is never going to work. And everybody was telling me it wasn't going to work. I should have got some other viewpoints because less than six months, somebody built one and it's still, it's called Mighty Wash and it's still there today. So there's number two, see? So this is, this is, if you look back at your life, so this is the one I wanted to ask someone in the audience, if they could, you know, somebody that wants to share one of their experiences and say, listen, oh my goodness, this happened to me. So if anybody wants to put up their hand and when you're ready, oh, go ahead. I'll share an experience. So this is when I was a, a, a manager of a credit union, okay? And yep. We had just sent out a notice to all of our clients that their that a lot of them were their fees were going to be raised on their they had overdrafts but we call them lines of credits at the credit yep. union, yeah. And so all these managers, so we had a manager meeting about it. And all these managers were like, "Oh my god, this is terrible! I can't believe the credit union is doing this. This is not right." They just you know they're just freaking out, right? And you know what I did? I was like, "Wait a minute." this is amazing. We're going to have a whole bunch of people that are going to be reaching out to us. This is going to create an opportunity for us to have discussions, to get to know our clients a little bit better and uncover other products and services that might actually be a better fit. This actually is going to be brilliant, guys. We can generate business from this opportunity because now all these people are going to come out of the woodwork and we can have conversations. And so my perspective was, let's use this as an opportunity and we ended up driving some of the best sales results that that branch had ever seen. And it was because I had a different perspective. So we just basically used as, as an opportunity. Now I had to be the leader and think differently than everybody else to kind of get that. Everybody else was kind of like, you know, panicking and worried about it, but we actually yep. turned lemons into lemonade. So that's what came to mind. I'm sure I could have a million other ones that come to mind, but. Sure. And I'm sure we all have them. And I, of course, for us now, it's not all about just business, but it's about family and whatnot. But of these business things, seems like we can all connect about that. But I mean, so, so, so the point is being, guys, when it comes to your perception, understand this, this is the spiritual term. This is the higher side of our personality. You can't see, you can't touch, it's not tangible to touch. We have to go deep on this. So understand that when we're looking at an idea of anything, I mean, right now, after you get off this phone call, whatever it is your rest of your day looks like, if you're looking at it and you can't seem to find the out, go get somebody else's point of view. So I think we should get three, four, five points of view on every idea that we ever have. You know? Now, sometimes people will be a little stubborn on changing it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Well, guess what? They'd rather be right than rich. Don't worry about being right. It's not about being right. It's about working now with our intellectual faculties. It was a present from God when, when he created us. I'm not going to let these little people go around like robots their whole life. I'm going to give them opportunity to be able to blend their thought with the higher side of their personality so they can go out and then they can choose how it is that they feel. 
Now that's how that's so. So this is so I'm going to reel it all in again. So this is this is about us being able to control how we feel. Our perception will help you if you change it. Now Wayne Dyer says, um, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at will change. That is a piece of gold. And if you slow down and talk about that, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at will change. And that's a beautiful thing, you guys. And um, and so this is this is pretty much it. That, that's the that's the summary of today's little lesson. It's about being able to be in control how it is that we feel again you know so you know looking at a situation if you don't if it's not feeling good to you you don't think you can do it you can't accomplish it think about it from three or four different angles and ask yourself the right question like an educated person was will this idea bring me closer to my goal and improve the quality of my life you go back to that and we do this through this higher side so when you're stuck on something go out and get three or four people's points of view and what's nice about this i i, I thought about this today and i was like i got to share with this is a terminology thing um, um, right now, um, well, for any of these people that are just killing it in their life and they don't really, and they're just like robots, they're called unconscious competence. They're very competent in getting stuff done, but they don't know how. So you know what we're doing here now, right now, this is step one or step two. We've now, we know how our mind works and now it's about getting control of our perception on things because now we can look at things and we can control everything that we do by changing and, you know, we can control how we feel by our perception of it. And so then this allows us to be in a good feeling. But this, this is what it takes to become a conscious competent. So once you become, once you leave unconscious competent to become a conscious competent through the use of your intellectual faculties blended with your thought, so you can feel good, guys, there's nothing on the planet now you can't do. Like, isn't this wild? Like, is this is almost like it's too simple now that it's been brought out. But you know, if nobody tells you, how are you gonna know? You're not gonna know. So now you're being told. I mean, for me, to have these tools brought into my life back in 2010, this just came live. In 2012, it really started hitting home. And then I started putting it to the test. There's nothing right now you can't put on a goal card that we can't achieve. But, you know, we're human beings too. <clears throat> we, well, we are human beings. What happens? We forget about that. We become human doers. <clears throat> and being human doing all the time, you forget about the human being and we forget the be. And then all of a sudden, we kind of forget that path on how we're gonna, you know, uh, stay in touch with this intellectual side, the spiritual side of us. And then we go into robot mode. We go do, do, do. You get up in the morning, you do your thing, you do your thing, you do your thing. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, you're doing it all over again tomorrow. And we forget to stop and be beings, human being. When you say that word, I want, I want everybody to remember this word now to sound a little different moving forward. We're human being. That's a spiritual term. We're beings, we're not human doers. When we're a human being, we have the ability to tap into our higher side. This is our spiritual nature. This is our gift from God that we use. So we can remain in a high vibration, positive vibration. And that's what this is all about today. And so this is, this is the power of the mastermind for additional, you know, okay, gotcha. Um, you know, th this is what's going to take us, you guys. This is step one of taking us to whatever it is you want in your life. Now, this goes to help your family as well. You know, and this is why this is so passionate for me, because when you get control, you, you know, of how it is you feel and you can perceive things a little different. I mean, when you're dealing with your kids, when you're when you're dealing, when you're when you're conversing with your spouse, if you have one, you know, with your business partner, I mean, take us take a step back and and breathe it in a little bit. Let's not react so much. So that's where I'm coming from. Um, and, and so um, part of these things right now, um, that's, that's really all I have to say on perception because we could do all these intellectual faculties in the run of an hour, but we didn't want to do that. We want to be able to share a few examples and keep doing some recap so we can you know, leave a lasting impression. So what's going to help us um, um, create the need for perception? Well, I have a few tips. I have around a hundred of them actually, but we're only going to drop a couple on you each day. And, and so one of them is, and this is probably not new material for you, uh, the impression of increase. I, I want us to, um, you know, our, the goal here is to be able to um, walk away from this by the end of the year and say, I have a new set of tools in my belt that's going to take me into 2021. And one of them um, that I want, as you're, as you're working through that and remembering about, you know, the higher side of your personnel, am I, am I now operating at my higher side? Which was some would say, am I speaking from my heart center? Or are you making decisions from here? And this is what we're going to start. We're going to keep talking this language on this particular call. And I think, you know, Jason and Joe, they have all these other business calls that they do during the week. But you brought me in to, to slow things down a little bit and understand that, 
guys, we're going to make our best decisions out of our heart center. And this means to breathe, breathe it in, breathe in those questions and let your higher side blend it with the thought versus reacting with you see, hear, smell, taste and touch. We've been controlled. We've been conditioned since we were kids to operate that way. And if we're going to live a balanced life, we need to be here. We need to be looking at those intellectual faculties. And so with this use of perception, one of the things that keep coming up for me, I look at situations and I, you know, we look at the homeless down here right now in Nanaimo, it's on every street, guys, we have COVID. We have COVID happening and there's just so much mental illness out there right now. Um, and so impression of increase is what I want to say. I want us to walk out of here. There's more than one way just to keep your high vibration. I want us to walk out of here today and understand when we see someone that's less fortunate and they're in the lineup and, you know, and, you know, we're seeing this all over you see in the homeless person on the street my advice to you is be like mother Teresa, right i mean you know she says don't judge how dare we judge how dare we you want you want you want happiness in your life you sit down you 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 maybe form a connection with that person when we were in a i was in a lineup last week and of course my normal instinct when somebody butts me off you know I was in a lineup, 19, 19 people deep, and a lady comes up, and she just didn't like the lineup. So she took her little basket, and she banged everybody and just did this little thing, and she blasted by everybody. And, of course, my initial thing was like, uh, excuse me, uh, hello, and thank my intellectual side of perception. It kicked in. Why? Because I'm, it's a mental muscle. It's like going to the gym. Don't think it's going to kick in for the first time. You got to go work them out. So that perception kicked in. And just as I wanted to rip her head off for just like banging, I was like, oh my God, I've been here for 15 minutes in a freaking lineup, breathing somebody else's, you know, COVID. And here we are, some lady goes right to the front of the lineup. Well, guess what? My perception kicked in and it says, Dean, you have no idea what's going on in that person's life right now today. That person might be anxious. She might have a, you know, she, there might be a mental disability going on and this is, and she doesn't know what to do and she's in fight or flight mode and she's leaving. So that allowed me to do instant forgiveness. And you want to know how light I was after that? I was so light. This is the little thing as you guys, that's, you know, so, so that's one, that's when mental, that's when, that's when you get to use these mental muscles. Like I said, going to the gym, you don't go to the gym and all of a sudden you can lift hundred pounds. You go and you start with the 25s and then you got to go a little bit and you got to, but you got to keep working them and being able to engage this higher side of your personality to, in, it's, to ensure that you're going to feel good and operate out of your heart center. That's what we're talking about on this whole other side of the coin. So impressions of increase. I'm going to, I'm going to bring up two little things today. One's called the impression of increase. Make it a conscious decision, especially now when you're in front of someone with your mask on, <laughs> you know, make it, make it, make it so that when you leave that person, they're going to feel better than when you just walked in front of them. When somebody can walk away from you and their vibration has changed because of something you said, that's the way we want. Hold that door and let that person in front of you on the COVID line and just be the person that mother Teresa said we could all be right. Be, be the, be the change that we all want to want to see in the world. We have to be it. Now I will uh, give you an example for myself, be the change you want to see in the world. I've said this, I'm going to say, if I didn't say it a hundred, I've said it 500 times in my life, but not until this year did I actually, did it actually explode in my heart. Be the change. I was talking about change. I was talking about it. Well, well I wasn't doing it. I was talking about it all the time. Oh, be the change you want to see in the world. Oh, I'm so, but guess what? When this really kicks in and it takes a hold of your, of your system, you'll start doing things a little differently. And that's not going to cook in until you get a good grip on the higher sense of your personality, of your, of your spirituality right here. Be the change you want to see in the world. Now, that goes right from that, that son of a bitch who picks up the phone and, and he's already got you on Real Geeks and you're answering the phone and, you know, and they just tell you to bugger off and they already got a realtor. You know, be the change. Don't slam the phone down. Just let them know, you know what, you guys? Um, hey, that's all good. It's all good. But you know what? And guess what? If, if that doesn't work out, by all means, call us back. You know, and then we get the emails in from all these real geeks. You know, like, you know, the, 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 the odd email comes in, you know, like, yeah. Screw you up yours from a, you know, from gmail.com, right? Call me back, you know, nothing. But so we have to be things a little differently. If we expect we're going to get different uh, results in our life, we have to be different. And so I'm just giving us some tools. I, I mean, and this is, they're not mine, you guys. I don't take credit for none of this stuff. This is only, I am just nothing but a conduit today to pass information from you, from, from, from that to you. And so that's my job today is to be a piece of pipe work. That's it. 
And so the next, the next last tip of the day is ADM. It's called advanced decision making. And that's what we're doing right now. 2021 is right around the corner. And right now, um, let's start thinking about those changes that we do want to see. I'm not talking about, I'm, I'm certainly not talking about New Year's resolutions. That's not what I'm talking about. I don't find that that's very effective. No, maybe not just, just, just for me. But advanced decision making is make, let's, let's take a couple of months so we're not pressurized by it right now. And let's see what we want. What, like, what, what do you want to change? If somebody could start typing in the chat box, just list one little thing that you'd like to see change in your life moving forward. Like, say 2021, what are one of those little things? What's something you'd like to see change in your life? Now, because why I'm saying that now is because now as you get tuned into this higher side of your personality, your intellectual faculties, your, 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 your gift that you understand that what perception is and what will is and intuition and reasoning and memory. My God, man, we have so much tools there that you can't go forward and not be happy with this. So if you could type in a couple of little things that you're hoping to change, right? Productive early morning. So guess what? Okay, let's take that one. I love that. Whoever said that productive early mornings. Okay. So what's going to have to change for you to be, you know, an, a productive early morning? Let's walk through this one right now. So I would say, let's just take the example uh, from that person. What time do you get up now? So let's take a look. And what time do you want to get up? There's the two things. The only, you know, that's from A to B. The biggest gap in life is the knowing doing gap. You know, you know all this stuff, but the getting up and doing it is another story, right? That's the biggest gap in life, the gap between what it is that we know and what it is that we do. So I know I need to get up at a certain time, but I don't. So uh, better health better morning routine. So let's just talk about that for the better health. So advanced decision making means let's start making those decisions now. So when, you know, when it comes to 2021, we don't have to get up one morning and go, okay, damn it. All right. I'm only having one coffee and I'm not doing this and I'm not doing this and let's not do that. Let, let's make a small incremental change right now. If you make a little one. So uh, and the example would be the getting up early in the morning thing. Jason, there's something on your nose there. I'm going to clean it off. Thanks. <laughs> No, that was on my screen. I was kidding. I'm a funny guy too, but you guys can't tell that because I'm sitting on the desk. But uh, so, if, you know, for those of you who want to get up and have an early morning routine. So if you feel that you're going to have to get up at five to, to, to accomplish everything in the day, huh, guess what? You can do that. But you know, I'm not asking you to do that now. So if you get up at seven o'clock, get up at 630 now. Let's start making the small things. So this is called advanced decision making. So then when January comes around or whatever it is, whatever you feel you want to do that change, you don't have to get up one morning and go, okay, I got to make this decision today. No, it's already made. It's already made. Advanced decision making. You will not have to get up January, whenever, it's, whenever, whenever your thing is, and you will not have to worry about making the decision. The decision is made now. So we're going to do that. So now you can screw up all you want for the next six weeks. Hey, I wanted to get up at five, but I got up at 7.30. Am I a loser? No, you're not. No, you're making an effort. So by the time January rolls around, guess what? Because you've been able to blend these new thoughts and these new ideas with your intellectual side, bam, you'll see change. Now that's the way this works, you guys. Improved health, better health, advanced decision-making. Oh, that's, that's Jason. The book, 5 a.m. Club, Robin Sharma. <laughs> Bob, you betcha. Robin Sharma is great, you guys. Um, he was the one who inspired this book right here, 20 Mr. Platinum. Robin Sharma came on, he did a 21 day challenge. And after I had my 21st day, he called me out and said, listen, all right, what is it? And I stopped and I wrote this book over four days. I stopped every appointment and wrote it out. So the, this is good material. So the 5 a.m. club is, could be just as possible. When you get up at five o'clock, you guys, my goodness, what a day you can have. But that means you gotta go to bed at 9.45, right? You can't, you can't keep the habits, you know, going to bed late and getting up, you know, getting up early. It doesn't work that way. So, so these are, this is an opportunity right now over the next six weeks for you to do some advanced decision-making and just make the little tiny incremental changes. So then it's not some big blast and it'll floor you when January comes. So, so that's the two tips for the day. Um, this is our intellectual side that we're talking about. This is the spiritual side. I'm learning about chakras right now, and I'm really excited about it. You know, again, for those of you who are into any amount of depth like that, um, you know, we'll be bringing that up. And once, and once I have, once I have um, really good teaching, um, I think that I'm confident enough that I could share some information that I'm learning right now. Trust me, I will be teaching you. And there's a, uh, there's another one here. Uh, since people brought up this thing about, um, look at this. I brought up about. Um, um they're getting up early look at this excuses be gone that's from wayne dyer's book and so i created that one i created this based on wayne dyer's book did you say 5 30 what the hell and so he's got some great questions there so again we're, i'd like to dive into that at some point you know bring it up and he's got a little thing going hey can you uh, can you be certain that uh, this you know because we have excuses can you can you be certain that that this excuse is true and if you can't well then it might not be true so then we're going to explore a little bit about that, about how we can help you. And, and this one, back up. somebody asked, sorry. Oh, oh my goodness. Yes. 
That's a slide I had in one of our presentations. I take a picture of it. Yeah. And um, this is a book written by Wayne Dyer. And boy, it really <laughs> affected me. Yeah, you're welcome. You know, is it true? So let's just deal with this. For Do we have time? What's, I have no idea. Yeah, I've got we're good. 140, we 145. Oh, shoot. And I thought this was going to be 15 minutes. <laughs> I'll be <laughs> damned. So, so, you know, so excuses be gone. This is brought up. I want to, I want to, I want to, you know, get up earlier in the day. Uh, did you say 5.30 a.m.? Any excuse you use, is it true? So you need to ask yourself. So this is where you get deep inside now. So now, if you can't get up at five o'clock, you must have an excuse for it. Well, I can't. I go to bed too late. Well, don't believe everything you think. Is it going to be difficult? So now then you answer that question. Can you be 100% certain that this excuse is true? If it's a, it, it is a possibility that it might not be difficult, if, if the possibility exists that it might not be difficult, well, then it's not true. So why don't you explore yourself on that one? Now, we'll, we'll dig deeper into this one in the future. But you guys, um, thank you so much for coming out for session number two. And we're going to continue this next week. Um, I think we're going to do imagination, which is, again, more powerful knowledge is what uh, um, um, Thomas Edison said. More powerful knowledge is your imagination. Now, imagination, you guys, is what created that computer right in front of you. Steve Jobs, you know, and that, that was all in his imagination. Now, you can't be tangible about imagination. Like, what is it? Can, oh, can I have four slices of imagination, please? Oh, well, that's not actually going to work that way. See, this is the higher side of our personality. And this is what we're going to develop. So again, mental muscle. And if you guys want a, a copy of, um, of any of these slides, of course, you know, like I got up here, but we choose today not to do slides because I just, I missed Jason and Joel's face last week. And uh, so I just thought we wouldn't do a slideshow. I don't, I don't, I don't act better on slideshows. I'd rather be in person like this. So, so this is, this is me. I put them off to the side because sometimes I think, hey, if somebody, uh, if somebody says something that triggers something, I will, right? So um, Byron Katie was mentioned. Oh my goodness. Yes, the work. What a great book. Again, right? Um, little hinges swing big doors. Oh, I like it. Mini habits, sustainable. The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari, all good books, exactly, you guys. So um, I wanted to thank everybody today. And as you're going out your week this week, now you have one more and now you can start using, okay? So um, bring in your, if you have a story to bring forth for next week for about imagination and, and how you had a thought of something and it created something, I want to hear about it. We all want to hear about it. This is a very collaborative group and however we can support each other, we will. And, um, and yeah, my, my prayers will go to everybody this week as you, as, you, as you head back out and start using these faculties. And remember, Rome was important, built in a day. It was built in a week. You know, it was, uh, you know, we have lots of time, you guys. But the important thing is that we know that we have time and, and, we, can, and we can start using the time that we have, right? So let's get up a little bit earlier, do a little bit of study, um, and, uh, and have a fantastic week. And I'm just thrilled. I'm, I'm out of my mind thrilled that we're, we're doing this together because, again, this is my purpose on the planet and our our you know purpose on the planet to do what you love to do and my my love right now is doing just this so thanks for having me again dean thank you so much man that was awesome and uh just gonna say something that you've done for me um just these sessions have uh motivated me to get back into making myself a priority you know and it started with conscious thought put it into action into feelings and then action and and you know um i've focused on everybody else for the last five years about myself and, yeah. and, you know, I've let myself go. And so I'm putting a lot of focus in myself, which in turn is making me a better dad, better husband. It's going to make me a better business partner and a better coach. So, you know, thank you for that. You've, uh, you've inspired me with these talks to just be like, stop. Maybe someday isn't going to happen. Let's go. Today's the day time to make Today it happen. And I've been day. taking action since. So thank you for that, brother. That's amazing. And you brought up the kids thing there and being better families and stuff. And guys, we have a thing we call the relationship test and it's uh, it changed the relationship between me and my children. And I'm going to bring that forth one day when it's ready. And I am like, I'm, and being a dad is what I love to do best in my life. And so I have a hundred tips too, for being a dad. And so I think moms can take a lot from this too, but, but certainly we're going to bring, we're going to be bringing that up as well in the new year. We're going to be having a session just about, you know, these things are to be shared. We're not supposed to hang on to anything that works in our lives. We can't be hanging on to this. We've got to give. So I have the most greatest tips about like, like, you know, how to treat your little kids when they're little. And, and it just folds, it, it just turns into 100% when you get older. I mean, the relationship I have with my kids right now, I mean, it, I, 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 my heart is so bursting with my relationship with my kids. And that's because somebody gave me some good ideas and I put them into action when they were just little. And right now we're inseparable. I love it. And that doesn't mean that we're perfect parents and we don't have arguments. We do pretty much every day. But we have just something special about my relationship with my kids. And I want to share that with everybody because you can take away one nugget. It'll change the whole relationship with your kids for the rest of your life. 
So I can't wait to share that with you as well. So thanks for having me. And I guess we'll see you next Tuesday on our next one. Namaste. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thank you, Dean. Yeah, cheers.